Hey everybody, my name's Daryl O'Bear and I'd like to welcome you back to Maya Mondays. So today what we're going to be doing is talking about depth of field inside of Maya. And we're going to be using Viewport 2.0 to visualize depth of field in real time. So it's a little bit different than the way it would look in a software render, but it still gives you a nice tool for setting the mood of your scene. So when you're working in Maya, if you wanted to, you know, if you're doing storyboard kind of animatic work, or if you're trying to do some pre-visualization or making demos like I do, obviously using the Viewport 2.0 depth of field works out pretty well. So just keep in mind that if you're doing software rendering, what you see in the viewport and what you get in the software render will have um, will have a different look and have potentially different values. But basically, the workflow is the same. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and turn depth of field on for a camera, and there's a couple ways of doing it. You can turn it on um, by either clicking the button right up here in the little uh, icons that run across the top of a pane, or you can turn it on directly on the camera. So if you say select camera, bring up the attribute editor, and go to the depth of field section. This might not be expanded out. Expand that guy out. There's just a checkbox to turn the depth of field on and off for every camera in your scene. So what we want to do is talk about a couple of these attributes. Um, obviously focal distance is pretty straightforward. That's that's the point in space at which the focal plane is going to be. F-stop again, obviously it's a pretty known camera term, so the lower the F-stop, the shallower the depth of field, the more blurry the image is going to be quicker. Obviously the larger F-stop, the more area that's going to be in focus. And then we have something that's called focus region scale. And what this does, um, it's probably easiest just to show you on the actual character. And, this might not come across totally clear on the video, so try out this on at home, and you'll you'll get a sense of what I'm what I'm doing here. So the focus region scale. If you put this down to a really small number, and I start to move my camera through here, a lot of these attributes won't update um, automatically. You kind of have to flip them to make them. Uh, you have to move jiggle the viewport to make it to make it mark itself dirty. And let's just push this out to something like 50. So when I got that focal distance out to a value of 50 this is basically that little line right there that's 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 showing up as I start to move through my character there you can hopefully that comes across the video that little shimmering line that's the area of where my focal distance is right now in that character because I set this focal focal region scale very small so basically what focus region scale does is it sets the area that's not going to get any blur and then from there it drops off based on your f-stop um, to the maximum blur value. So if we increase this out a little bit to something like 0.5, and again I have to jiggle the camera to update that, you can see that this region now goes from basically here to about here, and that's the area that's now in focus. Uh, the larger I make this, the larger the area that is completely not touched by the depth of field that's in focus gets, right? Pretty straightforward. Now from this region, based on my f-stop, it's going to be adjusting um, how quickly or where is that where is that blur start so as I start to increase this it's basically going to go from that focus region scale and if you turn that f-stop really really low you can see exactly you know exactly where that guy is and then it's going to blur out from there to the maximum blur so it's just a quick way of uh, kind of understanding what's going on with those values so if you want more area to be in focus you can either increase the f-stop and that's going to basically go from the area that's completely not blurred and just make that area that transitions from no blur to maximum blur larger it's going to spread it out or you can start to increase the no blur area by increasing the focus region scale and again you have to jiggle the camera to make that to make that update so just some things that you'll have to play around with, and you know these really help you tune the way the depth of field looks in the uh, in the viewport for the different uh, scene scales that you might have. So if you're working on something that's only you know two centimeters big, and you want it to look like it's you know 200 meters big, you can use these parameters to kind of adjust for your for your different scale and size of your scene and things like that. So they're pretty straightforward once you start to play around with them, like I was just doing. And you know, if you do it on your scene, it'll I think it'll make perfect sense to you once you play with it a little bit. So next thing that we want to do is talk about how we can build a simple rig to keep my character in focus as he moves through my scene, right? So I've got this guy kind of animated here or as I move my camera around. I always want my camera to um, to stay focused on on my character. And I also want it to be able to focus on whatever part I'm on. So if I'm over here looking at his head, I want it to be in focus. And if I drop down to his foot, I also want his foot to stay in focus. So I'm going to show you how I build up a quick little rig that I use in my presentations um, often to, to kind of automate the depth of field. So this is really easy to do inside of Maya. What we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and create a, um, we'll jump up to the perspective view here. What we're going to do is we're going to create 
so I have two cameras in my scenes. I've got the camera we were just looking through and then the traditional perspective view that I just switched to. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a distance tool to um, measure between our character and our camera. So we'll create the distance tool. I'll hold down my V key to kind of snap to a point. Hold down my V key to snap to another point. So with that done, I've got my, my distance tool sort of snapped on to uh, where my character is. And what this does is it, it basically makes um, two locators for me and then this distance tool that goes between those. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy, that locator, and I'm just going to grab it and parent it into that camera. So that's pretty straightforward, right? So now if I move this camera around, that distance tool is going to be driving to my, to my character. So what we want to do is we want to further kind of sweeten this up a little bit by making another uh, connection to our character here. But what I want to do is I want to actually make it not just be parented into like the character's head or something, right? I actually want this this locator to follow my character sort of on the ground plane, but I want it to go up and down based on the movement of the of the um, of the camera, right? So this is a really easy rig to set up. What we're going to do is we're basically going to parent this into um, the character using a couple of constraints. So we'll grab this guy right here. We'll grab our character, actually, and we'll grab our locator, and we're going to do a constraint on that. So we're going to do a point constraint. So we'll jump over to the animation tools. We'll pull up the options for this, and we're going to tell it to maintain the offset. That's cool, but we're not going to have it do it in Y. So we'll just do it in X and Z, maintaining the offset, pretty straightforward. So off it goes. So now if my character moves, obviously, that guy goes along for the ride and it's not bouncing up and down with the character. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to take this this locator and we want it to go up and down based on sort of where the camera is. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of zero this out to where his foot is, put that locator down there by his foot, pretty straightforward. We'll grab this camera plane, or this camera, and we'll drop that down to somewhere sort of like that, and we're just going to use a set driven key to to drive this. So we'll grab our camera, and we'll grab our we'll, we'll grab our locator here, and we'll bring up the animation tools for set driven key, which we looked at in one of the previous videos. We'll bring the options up for this guy. So we're going to drive this guy's Y translate based on this guy's Y translate. So pretty straightforward. I like where those attributes are. We'll just go ahead and we'll key that. We'll grab our camera here. We'll pull that guy up sort of here, and then we'll grab this locator, right? And we'll pull that up to sort of right there. And we'll go ahead and we'll key that. So now what I've got is I've got a simple little rig, right, that follows. It clamps, right? So as that foot stops, it basically, you know, if my camera drops below here, you know, that, that locator doesn't go past his foot, which we uh, kind of talked about in the previous uh, Maya Mondays video, and then it's also going to stop at the top of the head there. So what I get is I've now got this, this kind of cool little rig, and what we want to do is we want to have this number drive the focal distance on our camera. So what, to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring up our, um, our note editor. So we'll get the note editor up. Oh, looks like I didn't get the note editor, so let's go ahead and get the note editor here. So we'll say panel, note editor. All right, so we've got our note editor. Let's go ahead and graph our dimension tool. Pretty straightforward, right? And then we'll grab this guy right here. If you hold down the shift key when you click the graph inputs button, it will always just add your current selection into, uh, into that. So that's pretty straightforward. So if we expand this out, you can see we've got our focal distance and then if we expand this guy out we're going to grab the distance parameter so we'll just grab distance put that into focus distance and now if we look through that camera and let's bring up the attributes for that guy we can drop this f-stop down to something pretty low here. But as I move through, you can see that, look, his head's now out of focus, but his foot's still in focus. As I start to transition up my character, wherever I'm at, on, like, you know, his belly, his belly's in focus, his head's in focus. Right now, as I start to pull out, you know, it clamps down and it just stays in focus. 
wherever I'm looking at on that character. So it's just a simple little rig, but you know, I think it's pretty cool. And that is basically it. So those are a couple of uh, tips and tricks for working with depth of field inside of Maya and how to build up a simple little rig again using set driven key. Sort of sort of similar stuff that we talked about with set driven key um, in the last Maya Mondays video. So thanks again for taking time to uh, to check out the Maya Mondays videos. I hope you guys are enjoying them. If you have any questions, um, hit me up in the chat window inside of the area um, in the blog post. Thanks again for watching.